In this part of the lesson, we're going to learn how to animate the bricks and add that capability to the digital asset. So let's just uh, rename the squab to squab and we'll hide that. And we're going to change the first one just to say rubber toy, just so we easily distinguish those two. We're going to double click into here and we've got the platonic solid uh, feeding into the brick of I asset. And if we want to make edits, we're going to have to unlock it. Otherwise, as we saw before, everything was grayed out when we went into there. Now we're going to go into here, and what we want to do is add the ability to animate the bricks from sort of no bricks up to having some bricks. Let's rename this texture, the switch to texture switch, just so it's easy to distinguish it as we add more details into the network. And what we want to do is right click on the output of that and do a group by range. We'll put that into here. Now what group by range means is that we can take all the different points and we're going to turn these into the hide points. So we want to hide certain points. And we're going to do points and we're going to set up an expression. So the, the method we're going to use is start and length. And under length we can actually put information and we're going to do that information based on the frame number. So dollar $f minus 1 times, and we're just going to use the number 20 for now, uh, which basically represents the speed at which the points will animate. We're going to right click the output of this and put a blast node down. And you notice it deletes everything right now. But what we can do is we can um, go to the menu up at the top and say give me the hide points. And so now we see them all and as we animate they start to disappear. So the point numbers are starting to, to, to get removed. Now we want to organize that a little better because the, the point numbers aren't in the order we want them to be. So we're going to press put a sort node down and the method that we're going to use here will allow us to start from the ground and go up. So we're going to go along a vector, and we're going to change that vector, or we're going to leave it at 0, 1, 0, which is exactly what we want. And you see now it goes, starts from the bottom and goes up. But we sort of want the opposite of that, because what we want to do is, so we're going to de delete the non-selected, and now it'll start from the bottom and work up. So it'll just invert what we were doing, and that's on the uh, blast node. And there we go. So now we've got this thing animated. But we may not want to animate it all the time. So again, we're going to put another switch node down. And in doing so, we can, and we'll call this anim switch, animation switch. And we're going to feed the texture switch into it. And then we're going to put the blast node into it. And then we're going to feed it into the copy to points. And so this is a new feature that we've added. So we've got to make sure that this uh, gets promoted up. It's zero means no animation, and one means it's it's actually animated. Perfect. So let's take our digital asset here and set that back to zero. And then we're going to bring back the interface for the digital asset. And we're going to add this feature in, this last switch. And then we're going to actually give us control over the speed as well. So we're going to put a separator in to create a little animation section at the bottom. We're going to go to the animation switch. And we're going to bring this parameter over and put it right at the bottom. We're going to change the name of this to anima animate bricks. And the same with the proper name. And instead of making this a menu, we can actually turn this into a toggle because it's either going to be one or the other. So we just go toggle and that and keep the default at zero. Perfect. And apply. Now the other thing we want to do is bring over a uh, just an integer, a single integer value, and we're going to use this as the the speed of the animation. So we're going to go build speed and build speed. And we're going to set a range 
and the range is going to be from, well, it's going to go up to 20, and it's got to be at least, I think, 1. So let's put at least 1, and we'll put a lock on that, so it can't go any lower than that. Then with the channels, we'll say the default is 1. You might want a higher number, but that's good for now, and go accept. So that got put into the digital asset, and it, it now it works there. But we need to get that into the group range. So instead of saying 20 here, we're going to type in channel bracket dot dot slash build underscore speed bracket. And in actual fact, we're going to need to put um, quotations there and quotations there, and that will get that to work. So we're taking to take that build speed parameter we just added to the interface and use that uh, to decide how fast the bricks animate. Uh, now once we have that, uh, that needs to be saved out. So we need to go asset, save, brickify, and that will give us what we need there. As a matter of fact, maybe we'll just lock it. So we'll lock it, we're ready to go. So we go up to here and there we go. And so by default, there's no animation. Uh, and if we turn on animate bricks, then we've got some animation, but it's very slow. So we can increase the speed to, let's say, 20, which is what we had before. And now it'll animate relatively quickly. And that's perfect. Now, what's interesting is because we saved all this to disk, where the asset is, if we were to go back to the squab, you're going to find that the asset that we have associated there has also updated because it's referencing that same file on disk. And now we can do animation here as well. And that needs maybe an even bigger speed, maybe like 30. And there we go. So now we have both of these shapes animating using the digital asset. And so there you go. You built a digital asset from scratch, added parameters, and made it a tool that artists can use in their work to brickify their geometry.